This morning I'm addressing us on denominational loyalty. Denominational loyalty. And it's very important that we look at this. Because we can't grow without um, the denominational loyalty. L let me say a few things about membership process. First of all, somebody becomes a convert. And it's important for me to say this about being a convert. Thank you, blessed Holy Spirit, for your year. Now, being a convert, I made a comment that in our generation, certain men became men of God without becoming children of God of first. That's a problem for our generation. Some men became men of God without becoming children of God first. If you get back to process of metamorphosis, can you remind me, metamorphosis, there's three, four stages in metamorphosis. What are they? Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Now, we get back to the human beings. We have the, the child. What again? What again? What again? Now, Sometimes people, you know, it's dangerous to become a man of God when you were never a child at first. To become a man of God without being, in other words, the person had never had salvation experience. And how can you lead? Even as a casserite. Now, one basic question we must answer this morning. Am I born again? Wow. Does that sound too simple for a complex congregation like this? Am I really born again? Are you born again? Don't tell me the title, the position that you occupy. I don't want to know how you are the president or officer or zono or local branch or chapter branch. I don't even want to... I don't mean to insult your theological intelligence. Yes, a reverend, you climbed from exalter to license, license to ordain, from ordain to 10 years post-ordination, 20 years post-ordination, 30 years post-ordination. You became a sexual leader, a senior pastor, or you became a presbyter, superintendent, general, whatever. The question is, are you really born again? If you say yes, answer the following question. When did it happen? Where did it happen? How did it happen? And what happened? When did it happen? Where did it happen? <clears throat> How did it happen? And what happened? This is very important. You know, we're beginning to have a generation that people can't even figure out the time they got born again. They have no story. No story. Oh, oh, that day I remember that day. I will never forget that day when Jesus washed my sins away. When Jesus washed my sins away, He paid a debt He did not owe. I owe that debt. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Glory, hallelujah. Ubonzo puta nefene chemunagi. Oh, ubonzo puta nefene. Ubonzo puta nefene chemunagi. Oh, ubonzo puta nefene. Mengwaki soro 
Même moi qui sauve, y'a nous moi, oh, ou bon, sauf pour ça, ne fais. Allons pour Christ a tué à Jane, oh, ou bon, sauf pour ça, ne fais. Oh, y'a un quoi qu'à nous Jesus na kwa kanozo Abara chineke na kwa kanozo Yanara Jesus onye wanyi nyere ki ya nefu Yanara Jesus onye wanyi nyere ki ya nefu Onyere ki ya Yanara Jesus onye wanyi nyere ki ya Adigo gui corona, onye regi anefu. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost, but now I am classmates before your schoolmates to say I once was lost I was a courtist I was a car gear I was a runs gear a runs gear but now but now, now can I tell you what if you don't have a past tense in your life then I query your born again experience. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wrote a tract titled Bad Guys Are Welcomed. I wrote a tract. Bad guys are welcome. They are welcome. It is, it is in line with what the servant of God just said this morning. Bad guys are welcome. Occultists, they are welcome. Rough people are welcome. Criminals are welcome. But can I tell you what? What business do you have leading Christian community without personal salvation experience? You need Damascus Road experience. 
And I pray in case there is somebody here today who just came in as a council leader. Somebody who just killed him. You know, do you know you can maneuver us, answer intelligent question and be baptized in water? You can maneuver us, answer, I mean, I mean, conquer the entire church board and be made a full member. You can maneuver us and then go to Bible school. And a Bible school, a sinner who goes to Bible school will graduate with diploma in hardness of heart. You understand what I'm talking about? He graduates with what? Diploma in hardiness of heart. That's his certificate. What sinners are not the robbers on the highway? They are not the prostitutes on the brothels. What sinners are not the kidnappers in the bush? No, no! For those people, a sentence can hit them and they repent in sackcloth and ashes. Who are the worst sinners? They are the sinners on the pulpit and the sinners on the pew. They have a disease called over familiarity with God. Over familiarity. Do you know that um, some criminals on the highway have an atom of fear of God more than some people in the church? L let me give an instance. <clears throat> some years ago, there was this arm robber. They were operating on the highway. And when they were operating in the vehicle, they saw that some people were men of God, pastors. They said, Are you pastors? They said, Yes. We're not going to rob you. Come out, stay here. They robbed other people, but they left pastors because they are men of God. That's robbers. But what about the deacon that steals church money in the vestry? Between the two, who has better fear of God? Well, I don't want to bug you with that. Because I'm talking about dinner. So when you got born again, I remember one of the things evangelism does evangelism is not complete until evangelism takes you to a community of believers with a human goal and that's a denomination and i know that we become a convert the next thing is to be water baptized from water baptism to what full member and on and on and on and on let me let me say this. I think I should say this among the castle, right? There's something I discovered as a pastor and as a leader. Many people get water baptized, but they delay communion. They be delay being full membership. Some people, some pastors, kids, some young people, they get baptized, but they don't want to be communicants. What's wrong? What are you? Why are you hanging? <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? <clears throat> I don't want to bug you by asking you how many of you are communicants. But between baptism and communion, what is still holding you? Is there still a decision you are yet to make? Remember, I'm talking about denominational loyalty. Come on. By the way, how many of you like the church assemblies of God. How many of you like assemblies of God? No, it's not come. You don't have to raise your hand. If you don't like, it, just put your hand there. If you like assemblies of God, raise your hand. I, I don't know. I, I, well, my castle, I don't know. Um, probably, I know somebody can be a castle, right? Officer in castle without necessarily being an assemblies of God. I, I know that. I, I know that. But I, but, but I also know that. Um, Assemblies of God is the mother of castle. So somehow, somehow, if you like castle, indirectly you like assemblies of God. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Because they produce you this platform. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's a platform produced, uh, you know, by assemblies of God. Am I still correct, uh, castle uh, direct? Am I correct? Okay. Having said that, but I want to say this: between you have to. Um, look at there is no denominationalist Christianity did anybody hear me what did I just say you understand what I'm saying 
I understand. This is a generation of denominational prostitution. This is a denomination of what? Denominational prostitution. That in one year, somebody can be a member of five different denominations. By January, Salvation Ministry. February, Church of God. March, Assemblies of God. April, what? Redeemed. May, what? What? Huh? Winners. And then by, by June, Christ Embassy. Is that not a confusion? It will be confusion. Because you don't have where you're loyal to. And I will tell you before I end. The danger of having independent spirits. I know it is a generation of denominational prostitution. But I'm going to say this. There are treasures of having loyalty to a denomination. So you can have a shepherd that can watch over you. Somebody you can be responsible to. That's why, sir, independent evangelist is a mirage. Nobody's an independent evangelist. Because you have to depend on denominations, even for your ministrations or ministration support. I will say this to you. So, having said that, somebody must have a denomination that you are loyal to. And you must, well, by the way, without apology to anybody, I love Assemblies of God. I have reasons why I love the church. It, it's not a personal church. It doesn't belong to anybody. They say soldier go, soldier come. But the barracks remain. I explain it in two ways. Number one, the soldier is the pastor. Barak is the members. Soldier go, soldier come. Barak remain. Pastor, you're a soldier. You go, go. Nobody has certificate of occupancy to any local church. The, what did I say? What did I say? Where you are now, thank God for what you're doing, but you will go one day. If you don't even go now, you go by retirement. Now, another soldier goes, soldier come is the leadership and the lead. The lead are the barrack. Leaders are what? Both at the national level and so. I mean, it gives room for people to have fresh air. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Assuming a particular air has been uh, worrying you, you can have fresh air. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You can have fresh air. Number two, I want to tell you, I still challenge as far as Nigeria is concerned, we, we rank highest as a denomination that has survived several general superintendents. I was opportune to address a church. Um, they had a, a background of pastors in Lagos. And I told them, I, of course, the, the general overseer went to be with the Lord. And I said, this is a test for you people, whether you really have strong foundation. That the general overseer passed. This is the time to know whether the church will stand. You can know that this church, the service of Nigeria, just like it is also in Nigeria, we have survived many general superintendents. About five, is it five or what? About five or what? Many general, yet the church is on. What am I trying to say? Hear me, man of God. You know why you should like this church? Your destiny is not in the hand of the general superintendent. Your destiny is not in the hand of the district superintendent. Your destiny is not even in the hand of the committee members. It's not the deacons that have your destiny. It will be spiritual kindergartenhood 
for you to behave as if your destiny is in the hand of the committee members. No! Wave your hand and say, I love this church. Say that again. Say that again. Say that again. Well, I, I, I still have a few more. So I don't want to, I have many things to say. So I don't want to talk about, but you must have a reason. Man of God, why did you sign up for this church? Why are you here? Why are you here? And I remember when we signed off a paper. Of course, the church didn't call you. Do you know the church didn't call you? Assemblies of God did not call you. Who called you? You came and presented yourself. You told the leaders, I have been called. Help me fulfill my ministry. Is that correct? They didn't call you. They didn't call you. Now, let me say this. Now, having done that, I want to ask a very important question. Why should a full-fledged minister with experience and anointing be hot and is being hotted? H U hot, H U R U T, and he's been tossed here and there, maltreated, yet he remains in the church. Let me repeat this question. Why should a full-fledged minister of the gospel with every capacity to become bishop, general overseer, even if it is a one-way house, with every experience and anointing? Because no matter what you do, you must have followers. Even if you open your own and call it Naked People Church Incorporated. Will you have members? Will you have followers? Yes, you're going to have followers. But why would such a person with all the potentials, yet with experience, with anointing, his heart, his thoughts here and there, maltreated, yet he remains still in the system. Is there any medicine you drank? I remember I was under pressure. Break up. You have it all it takes. We are waiting for your order. We have land here and there for you. You don't need to make it for just make a decree and make a declaration. And I know if I made a declaration, at least I will get sizable number of followers. But I was moved and I am still moved by my love and loyalty for the church. I was moved. I am still moved by my love for the church. I got friends. I got big general overseers. But my love for assemblies of God is irrevocable. And I pray you have this. Let's tell me that. What's the business being a pastor in a church you don't love? Why are you still standing on their pulpit? Why are you living in their personage? Why are you still taking their allowances? Why are you still occupying their positions? If you don't love this church. How dare you stand on their own pulpit and saying everything is there, everything is there, everybody rubbing from their own pulpit? You are killing, I mean, talking ill. And many a time, what we say on the pulpits, what we publish, has also helped people not to come to the church. Um, by the way, before you accuse me of not reading the scripture, go to 1 Corinthians 4, 2 and as Apostle chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, somebody. Get me 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. <clears throat> yes.
yesterday I read as Apostle chapter 13. He said yesterday about the uh, church of Anti in Antioch. And what I want you to catch there is the people who were there. They are loyal. The Holy Spirit said to them. But let me look at uh, somebody get me 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. Moreover, it is required in steward that a man be found what? Faithful. Faithful. And when we talk about loyalty, we talk about faithfulness. I said that churchless Christianity or denominationless Christianity is a mirage. Every church has a process of becoming a member. In fact, you know, there are churches, immediately you get water baptized. In fact, there are people who don't even wait for you to be water baptized. You, you give them communion. You understand what I'm talking about? In Assemblies of God, Nigeria, let me put it. You know how I put it? In Assemblies of God, Nigeria. You will first of all get water baptized. Then you now pass through another process before you become a communicant. There are other people that once you are baptized, you... You can, and there are churches, the day you got born again, you don't need baptismal class. They get you baptized. These are the rudiments. And um, um, to be a minister of a denomination is not a joke. But can I tell you what? Pastors, lift up your hands. There is no great preacher, great pastor, without an ugly story concerning the denomination. Do you have your own? If you have your own, raise your hand. Okay, if you are not, okay, you are a prospective candidate. <laughs> Did you get me? Well, let's divide the house. Fresh graduates, prospective candidates, and current candidates. Where do you belong? Yeah. There is this story that people can parade what the leader did to me, what the leader did to me. Except somebody like the DS that had never had what the leader did to him. <laughs> <coughs> Everybody has a story of what the leaders did. But I can tell you something. The leaders never met and decide to de deal with you that way. That would be satanic. A couple of years ago, I was addressing Nigerian Assemblies of God um, uh, fellowship in the United States. And the uh, some people raised their hands. You know what they were saying? What, what the church did to our father? What the church did to our father? They were, they were saying it. They were angry. I told them, look at you now. Many of you are billionaires. Trillionaires. And I told them, your fathers, the leaders never decided to deal with your fathers. But God who called, God who saw the faithfulness and loyalty of your fathers, decided to bless you greatly today your millionaires and billionaires not because of your holiness or purity by the sacrifice of your fathers it was advanced advanced and i tell you no matter what you're passing through hear me the caller is watching you the caller knows how to reward you. The caller knows what to do concerning you. I said something yesterday. Let me refresh your memory. About two kinds of membership. I don't want to talk about um, members on transit. I don't want to talk about... Uh, what again? What again did I say? Okay, what again? That's, that means you are good students. That means you are good students. Let me say this before I get back to that. If you are a part of a denomination, you are not independent. If you are a part of a denomination, raise your hand. 
Then talk to that person, tap the person, tell him you are, then you are not independent. If you are a part of a denomination, raise your hand again. Are you? Then let your neighbor tap you and tell you, then you are not independent. How do you know a checklist on the kind of membership? Now, see what determines if you are a stakeholder. Number one, how do you react when you are offended? Can you be offended in the church? Yes. Leaders can offend you, not knowingly. It is possible. Somebody can also knowingly offend you. Somebody can also be testing you. Membership can also be what? Testing you. One funny story I had the other day. A, a, a new pastor came to a place with a language. And he came in to, when he was making an announcement, he called his sister and said, He came to him, he came. And they petitioned him right away. <laughs> they petitioned him. Okay, a lot of people. <coughs> okay. Oh, okay, is that your place? He came to He came. And they said, How can a new pastor start this way? <laughs> Telling a sister that the Ike Achoreho, Ike, and, and that was a big deal. I don't want to, um, if you want further explanation to that story, you can, you can consult uh, the man from that. <coughs> so, what am I trying to say? You can be offended. Membership can offend you. Just like we tell people who want to get married. If you want to go get married, get ready to be offended. If you don't want to tolerate nonsense, don't attempt marriage. In a relationship, get ready to be offended. But what you do when you are offended, either by the altar or by the pew, what you do and how you react will show whether you are a stakeholder or not. Your language, what you say, your level of commitment and resignations and workouts. How can you quickly, a little thing, you pull your paper, you want to resign? <laughs> That's a maturity. Just pull your pen, you want to resign. They will look at you as a very little, little person. Why are you resigning? I don't want to say today, in case you have prepared your resignation paper, go and tear it after this service. Go and tear it. Withdraw it. This is our church. Whatever is wrong, we shall stay here and make it right. And let me tell you, your opinion will be stronger when you are inside. When you are outside, it is outsider's opinion. Did anybody hear me? When you are inside, you can raise your hand at any place, at the council, in writing, you are entitled to your opinion because you are an insider. The moment you become an outsider, nobody wants to hear you. Mind your business becomes the thing. But now that you are inside, it is my business. Progress is my business. The future of the church is my business. Is somebody hearing me? I was ministering the other day on the internet and I said something. Let me say this to young especially the students. 
I spoke on what I call suicide. The suicide mission that is going on now by the church. What is suicide? Killing yourself. Now, when you look at the Facebook and see the writings on the Facebook publications by the Facebook and some of the evil things said about the church, go to the profile of the writer or the publisher. It was not written by a Muslim, not written by Buddhist or Hinduist or, or, or Taoist. It is written by people who are what? Christian. They are the first to bring rubbish to the internet. To rubbish their church. Now, hear me. It's not the Islam people. The Islam, the occultists, they are even surprised at what they publish. Because you want to rush to boost your Facebook page. Your page. Because of that. <laughs> You go and publish. Now, hear me. Mind what you publish from today. For what you publish could be an arrow against the church. What you publish. I don't know if somebody's understanding me. And there are pastors who do that on the pulpit. All they know is to research on negative illustrations. And that's what they feed the people with. They can't talk about something positive. You come to the pulpit. The only thing you will hear is how A fared, how B fared, how C fared, how D fared. People will go back with the consciousness. People are falling. They don't talk about people who succeeded. They don't talk about the secret of success. They become negative carriers of stories. And people put that in their side. May God deliver us from this suicide mission. That we can say something positive. So that people can come to church and be happy. I don't want to pastor a church where members will be afraid of laughing in the church. For fear that they will be called the sinners for laughing. Thank God, the man of God, Pastor Steve, has, you know, he has said several things about smile. That God is a happy God. Not when you come, everybody. Nadia, Nadia, Nadia. Nadia, no good to me. The choir, ni mokochi. Nadia, no genile. Nadia. The joy of the Lord is my The joy of the Lord is The joy of the Lord is my strength The joy of the Lord is my strength Come on, take it again The joy of the Lord is The joy of the Lord the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. to God. But let me tell you something. Do you know somebody may be a pastor but it's not loyal to the denomination? Yeah. There are several of God pastors who are not loyal to the denomination. In fact, their pulpit is their own general council. Their pulpit is their own district. That's their own. So anything you are doing there, it does not concern them. Somebody can also be a presbyter. <clears throat> But not loyal to the assemblies of God. Yeah, it's possible. I know what I'm talking about. Somebody can also be a district superintendent, yet it's not loyal. He's not loyal. Somebody can be a director of the general council, yet it's not loyal to the assemblies of God. There are some gifted people that are not loyal. I've said this and let me repeat. If you see any gifted young man or young lady, 
that still remain loyal to this church periodically shake hands with him grace and gift attracts envy but I don't have time to get into that now faithful and loyal people are the most qualified to become leaders the man of God said it and I quote what he said what if you don't do what if you are not a good follower, you don't qualify to lead. You don't qualify to lead. The devil is an expert to destroy the church from within. He uses fifth columnists, agents, friends, supporters who are already within the city. They will open big gate for the devil to rush in. Disloyalty breeds strife, hatred, and murmuring. It is like smoke that fills the house. Now, these loyal people, their home becomes meeting place for all discontent people in the church. They gather to discuss and to criticize. They use, let's pray for our pastor. Look at their language. Let's pray for our pastor. How did the church go today? I think it was dry. Let's pray for our pastor. <laughs> Number two prayer point. As a Bible-based church, don't you think we need some miracles? Do you think our pastor is as anointed as he was last year? Let's pray for our pastor. <laughs> you know, certain gossips has come into prayer. <sighs> What a poisonous thing to have a disloyal driver. Do you know you can be you can have a driver that is not loyal to you? When a driver is not loyal to you, he'll be feeding an external person with negative information. Yet taking salary from you. What an unfortunate thing to have a disloyal PA. It is possible to have a disloyal peer. Though, sometimes, you know, uh, you remember when I used to do leaders retreat, I also organized special retreat for drivers. And sometimes I, I shared papers. I said, drivers, tell us what your masters are doing to you which you don't like. And you don't need to hear what they say. <laughs> you don't need to hear what the drivers say. You know, you also have to make your staff happy. You know, loyalty, there are something you, 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 you give incentive. There are certain incentives that will breed loyalty. I know we have a good doctrine. We have a lot of things, good trends, brother. But the greater challenge of Assemblies of God Nigeria is politics. And let me define politics as a political scientist. Politics is who gets what, when, and how. Who gets what? When and how? Our problem is not uh, the salmon. Our problem is not the structure. Our problem is politics. And what is politics? Who gets what? When and how? And that's our problem. That's where we're getting it. That's where the fighting is. Who gets what? When and how? May revival come to us in that arena. <clears throat> So you can have a disloyal assistant. That's why I, I just appreciate the fact that um, the era of somebody fixing assistant pastor to you has gone to oblivion. We are the assistant pastor will be there as an, as a, an agent before you finish coughing. The cough is already available at the table somewhere. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. But now he knows that he came in as a result of your choice. He's there to help you succeed. He's there. The primary purpose is to assist you to succeed. Not when you go to visit somebody. 
What about senior person? You know, he's a traveler now. Will he even remember your name? I've just come to, you know, what type of assistant is that? He's not assisting you to succeed here. <clears throat> and to make it more difficult for you to destroy and come back, there's also a policy that you can't directly move from being an assistant to senior. You must go out and spend about two, three years before you then now want you, they bring you back. There are reasons for some of those things. What am I trying to say? Oh, don't forget this world. If you are not a good follower, you can be. The Ibo man says, Onye soe, Onye, Eze megene, Eroyaka. If you, if you serve the king, then, Kingship will reach you. Do you know we can have this loyal assistant, this loyal presbyter? Let me show you where manifestation of um, loyalty transfers. Especially when it appears unfortunate. I told you yesterday when I was talking about presbyter's meeting where somebody was transferred. Who was the person? Thank you. You are a good student. He was transferred to a church called what? Which section? Yeah. But he went there and broke records. So shall you break records. You, you will command your environment. The grace of God will, will, will really be with you. So transfer. It's not an easy thing. Especially when you're moving from big to small. He was telling us about how he moved to a church of 25. And there in 25 he was praying and doing everything and it didn't went to 12. Wow. And, and let me tell you, church cannot grow above environment. Except God does something. Very, very supernatural. Something extra supernatural can take place. And so, transfer, how you react when you are transferred is very important. I've had situation where members say you're not going anywhere. I've had situation where members on their own began to go from presbyter to presbyter and say this man is not leaving they were going protesting to the point that my presbyter said okay go and tell gd we can change the transfer they came back to me and i said as long as the leaders are giving me paper for them now to tell you to go and tell me no i will leave according to the leaders they got disappointed, but I knew what I was doing. It's good for you and the leaders to be on one page than to push you to the church. To abandon you in the hands of the church. I said, okay, you don't want him to go. Oh, yeah. eh, let him remain. Let him remain. Eh? Hmm, he may not last. <laughs> what did I say? He may not last. And when it doesn't last, you will now look for the same people for rescue to rescue you. And what will happen? No, now. <laughs> Let me rush. I just have seven minutes more. Seven uh, fifty six. So, what I'm saying is loyalty. Another thing is account. Faithfulness in rendering the account will define your loyalty. Faithfulness. Don't connive with people. Who doctor the accounts? I set up audit committee when I was a district superintendent, and um, they normally call it the EFCC. That they went from church to church. I remember they started with the big church, and find out at the end of every month they will bring us something from the income and then put in the treasurer's account. Auditors came and found out that what, the thing were being doctored and the thing climbed at that time to about is it 900,000 or what? You know, it's, it was a big money then. Hi. And the report came to us and that was the first report by that freshly appointed auditors. And, sir, do you know when this report came, even presbyters were afraid of dealing with that poor church because it was the number one church. So, but I said, they found out something. If we don't deal with the matter, 
what will happen? It will just become a mere physical exercise. I said, okay, we're going to go there. And we decided, hey, we're going to go there. Since they've done this, if the pastor is aware of it, the pastor will go. But the deacons who did this, if they, are, if they did that alone, they are going to be dissolved. Wow. So we decided, the time, one of the officers, either the treasurer or what? Or the, I said, okay, you're going to preach. I'm going to do the address. Before it was time to go, he, he mated. You know what mate is? Mate, I think I had it from, from police people. They mate. If there's a battle there, you mate. You dodge. <laughs> he mate. I said, okay, I'm going to go. Because in leadership, anything you can't defend, don't approve. I went to the other. After addressing the church and telling them what happened, and told them that those people will come down as deacons, the church shouted, dissolve them for 10 years. And that thing helped. From that day, the account in the district changed. Those who were doing the, the, the income change. Those who are doing funny, funny things, it changed. Chances are that there are big, big churches who may be sitting on some hidden incomes. Sacred incomes. And uh, they are sitting on it. That does not show loyalty. Loyalty is faithfulness according to what has been agreed by policy. Oh my God. I don't know how this... Uh, time caught up with me this morning okay maybe you know we'll continue to worship jesus and worship the lord until jesus comes no need to finish it in one service when the team national team how do you deal with the national team district team district programs how do you honor them that shows how loyal you are also how do you Accept discipline even when you are you think you are wrongly disciplined. I was speaking with a man a couple of years ago, and I told him, Return, be loyal to the church, and we will release the suspension on you and let you be free and stand the lecture. You know what he told me? He told me, I cannot be suspended, I am a pope. Yeah, he told me, I said, yeah, are you a Pentecostal Pope? He said, yes. Then I, I, he said to me, and that's what I want to say. I asked him a question and I said, suppose a junior minister comes to you and tells you that he was wrongly suspended. What will you tell him? To ignore it? To rob it the church? Now, let me tell you something. You may be wrongly disciplined. But loyalty, loyalty will help you to accept and let God vindicate you. Papa cannot sleep. It might be painful. I will be telling you that loyalty is expensive. Loyalty is costly. Oh my God. Very, very costly. But I also know, if you read the Bible in... in, 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 in um, Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 20 says, He says, Among my people are wicked men. Have you read it before? Jeremiah 5, 26. Can you read it out? I have two minutes, 31. Just read it. Oh, is it here? Among my people are what? Found what? Oh, not outsiders. Among my people. Sometimes among some leaders. Are found what? They lay wait. As he that set the snares. They set the trap not to catch bush meat. To catch men. Get me another translation. Please, me dear, get me another translation. Not King James. Let's look at what the Bible says. For wicked men live among my people. They watch like fowlers. Lying and wait. They set a trap. They catch men. Get me another translation. Get me another translation. Uh, among my people have found wicked men. No, no, this is also a foul thing. Bring me another translation. Maybe, for among my people have found wicked men that lie in wait. Ah, this foul now. 
Satan's snares and traps to catch men. <laughs> <laughs> Among my people are wicked men who look for victims. They look for what? Victims. Like a hunter hiding in a blind. Wow. A hunter hiding in a blind. Looking for victims. They set their traps for men. There are people like that. If you have grace, instead of complimenting the grace, they begin to set traps. But, if you are a lawyer, if you are a lawyer, stay calm. Your deliverance is coming. Why are some wounded, offended by the church and leaders, yet they are still here? There are people here who have been offended, but they are still here. That should encourage you to be loyal. Why did they refuse to retaliate? We have situations where people are removed from office, betrayers by confidence, the church willingly or wittingly offend you. Many a time, leadership is a thankless job. Wounded people are here. Loyalty demands full love and commitment. Loyalty will cost you. You cannot be loyal to everyone. Loyalty is expensive. Loyalty, loyalty, and loyalty. Well, the time is gone, and we must be loyal also to time. Loyalty also involves when you're preaching, and they ask you, you have 10 minutes. Loyalty will make you to stop at 10. I pray that the Lord will help us to be able to be loyal so that we can reach where God wants us to reach. We love you so much. We are praying for you. The grace of the Lord will rest permanently upon you. And this district, God will continue to bless you and make you a model and give our dear district superintendent special wisdom on how to navigate this district in the name of Jesus. Amen.